Electric RC are very simple toys, except they aren't at all. Many who come over from Nitro RCs or people who are just getting into the hobby underestimate the complexity that goes into these things. Today we're going to be going over two parts, the ESC and the motor. Let's get started. The electric motor in your RC car is, compared to other parts of your car, quite simple. There are two main types of RC motors used in today on mass, each with their own uses. The first type is much less used these days, but still comes in crawlers and some cheap RTRs. They're called brush motors, or DC motors. I won't go so much into detail as to how these motors work as I'm not too well versed in that space. I'll link off to a video that goes more into detail as to how exactly they work. The long short of it is that brush motors use a system of direct current to power magnets, or brushes, which then spit a metal pole, or rod. Brush motors come in many different forms, from small drone-style motors to full-on crawlers and even some racers, although only for certain classes. If you're just getting into the hobby and you buy a less expensive RC or a lower-end Traxxas, you'll probably end up with a brush motor. They tend to be a bit on the weaker side depending on the turn rating, but generally brush-powered cars are slower than brushless-powered cars. Speaking of which, brush motors, contrary to popular belief, actually spin slower than their brush counterparts. The difference comes from the amount of torque they have. Because of this, brushless power cars tend to be a bit faster than their brushed counterparts, again depending on the turn rating. The turn rating is another part of the motor I don't have the capacity to explain in full, but all you really need to know is the fewer on the turns on the motor, the higher torque and speed you'll get. You usually see turn ratings fixed in stock racing, with the three most popular ones being 21.5 turn, 17.5 turn, and 13.5 turn. Consult your local track organizer and nearby racer to see which motor goes with which class as it can sometimes change. Short course truck and stadium truck classes generally use 13.5, whereas buggy classes usually use 17.5. And for on-road, touring cars usually use 21.5, although I have seen them use 17.5 before. The last thing I want to go over in terms of motors is timing. Motor timing is generally how fast you want the motor to spin. The more timing, the faster it will turn. Now why wouldn't you want to have full timing all the time? Well, to put it simply, too much timing can actually hurt your motor's torque and cause it to overheat. You can generally adjust timing on the back of the motor by unscrewing a few set screws and turning a dial to the desired setting. Usually this is measured in degrees from 0 to 60. It is important to note, however, that not all motors allow you to do this. For example, the chest stock motor you're looking at right now is fixed to a certain setting and won't allow you to change it. The next thing we need to go over is your ESC. This device is what connects to and controls your motor, basically telling you what to do at any given time. You tell it this via a receiver you connect up to the ESC, or more accurately, vice versa. This particular ESC is a Hobbywing V3 120 amp, with the 120 denoting how many amps this ESC can handle for a sustained period of time. The more powerful a motor, the more powerful your ESC will need to be able to handle it. This is generally something you don't need to worry about when it comes to stock racing, but when it comes to mod, it certainly is. This V3 120 amp is rated to handle any motor down to 3.5 turns, where this just stock ESC can only handle stock motors down to 13.5 at most. Now because this is a Hobbywing ESC, which I consider to be the most beginner-friendly brand, you can program it using a basic programming card like this. Other brands like Teak and Reedy and McLan use different ways to program their ESCs, but their settings should be roughly the same. Also, I'm aware Hobbywing has a Wi-Fi connector that allows you to fine-tune your ESC better, but if you're just starting out or are a beginner, this will provide plenty of adjustment for you. As for actually programming your ESC, the most of the settings are self-explanatory like reverse speed and boost timing, but some aren't so easy to understand. For example, you have DRRS Punch. Putting DRS Punch to level 1 will make your car put down its power very, very gradually, whereas putting it to level 9 will give you basically max torque instantly. You more or less have to tune this to your surface as you don't want to overpower the grip of the rear tires. Neutral range is the distance you need to move your throttle from neutral before the ESC applies power. My advice would be set it to any percent you're comfortable with and stick with it. Drag brake is how much brake is applied when you let off the throttle without hitting the brake yourself. This is more one of those personal preference things. If it's easier to drive with some drag brake for you, then go ahead and run some. In short, there's a lot to learn about ESCs and motors, and it would be impossible for me to go over it all in such a short span of time. I hope this video at least gave you a general idea as to what the ESC and motor actually do in an electric RC car. I'd like to thank you for watching and would love for you to like and subscribe to the channel if you like what I do and would like to see more. 
If you'd like to support me another way, I've linked my Patreon page in the description below. Have a good day, and I'll see you next time.